story thirty one of Hurlbut's Story of the Bible, Part One. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Hurlbut's Story of the Bible by Jesse Lyman Hurlbut, Part One The Cluster of Grapes from the Land of Canaan. Numbers thirteen, verse one to chapter fourteen, verse forty five. The Israelites stayed in their camp before Mount Sinai almost a year, while they were building the tabernacle and learning God's laws given through Moses. At last the cloud over the tabernacle rose up, and the people knew that this was a sign for them to move. They took down the tabernacle and their own tents, and journeyed northward toward the land of Canaan, for many days led by the pillar of cloud by day, and the pillar of fire by night. At last they came to a place just on the border between the desert and Canaan, called Kadesh, or Kadesh Barnea. Here they stopped to rest, for there were many springs of water and some grass for their cattle. While they were waiting at Kadesh Barnea, and were expecting soon to march into the land which was to be their home, God told Moses to send onward some men who should walk through the land and look at it, and then come back and tell what they had found what kind of a land it was, and what fruits and crops grew in it, and what people were living in it. The Israelites could more easily win the land if these men, after walking through it, could act as their guides, and point out the best places in it, and the best plans of making war upon it. There was need of wise and bold men for such a work as this, for it was full of danger. So Moses chose out some men of high rank among the people, one ruler from each tribe, twelve men in all. One of these was Joshua, who was the helper of Moses in caring for the people, and another was Caleb, who belonged to the tribe of Judah. These twelve men went out, and walked over the mountains of Canaan, and looked at the cities, and saw the fields. In one place, just before they came back to the camp, they cut down a cluster of ripe grapes, which was so large that two men carried it between them, hanging from a staff. They named the place where they found this bunch of grapes Eshkol, a word which means a cluster. These twelve men were called spies, because they went to spy out the land. After forty days they came back to the camp, and this is what they said. We walked all over the land, and found it a rich land. There is grass for all our flocks, and fields where we can raise grain, and trees bearing fruits, and streams running down the sides of the hills. But we found that the people who live there are very strong, and are men of war. They have cities with walls that reach almost up to the sky, and some of the men are giants, so tall that we felt that we were like grasshoppers beside them. One of the spies, who was Caleb, said, All that is true, yet we need not be afraid to go up and take the land. It is a good land, well worth fighting for. God is on our side, and He will help us to overcome those people. But all the other spies, except Joshua, said, No, there is no use in trying to make war upon such strong people. We can never take those walled cities, and we dare not fight those tall giants. And the people who had journeyed all the way through the wilderness to find this very land were so frightened by the words of the ten spies, that now on the very border of Canaan they dared not enter it. They forgot that God had led them out of Egypt, that He had kept them in the dangers of the desert, that he had given them water out of the rock, and bread from the sky, and his law from the mountain. All that night after the spies brought back their report, the people were so filled with fear that they could not sleep. They cried out against Moses, and blamed him for bringing them out of the land of Egypt. They forgot all their troubles in Egypt, their toil, and their slavery, and they resolved to go back to that land. They said, Let us choose a ruler in place of Moses, who has brought us into all these evils, and let us turn back to the land of Egypt. But Caleb and Joshua, two of the spies, said, Why should we fear? The land of Canaan is a good land. It is rich with milk and honey. If God is our friend and is with us, we can easily conquer the people who live there. Above all things, let us not rebel against the Lord, or disobey Him and make Him our enemy. But the people were so angry with Caleb and Joshua that they were ready to stone them and kill them. Then suddenly the people saw a strange sight, the glory of the Lord, which stayed in the Holy of Holies, the inner room of the tabernacle, now flashed out and shone from the door of the tabernacle in the faces of the people. And the Lord out of His glory spoke to Moses, and said, 
How long will this people disobey me and despise me? They shall not go into the good land that I have promised them. Not one of them shall enter in except Caleb and Joshua, who have been faithful to me. All of the people who are twenty years old and over it shall die in the desert. But their little children shall grow up in the wilderness, and when they become men they shall enter in and own the land that I promised to their fathers. You people are not worthy of the land that I have been keeping for you. Now turn back into the desert, and stay there until you die." After you are dead, Joshua shall lead your children into the land of Canaan. And because Caleb showed another spirit, and was true to me, and followed my will fully, Caleb shall live to go into the land, and shall have his choice of a home there. Tomorrow turn back into the desert by the way of the Red Sea. And God told Moses that for every day that the spies had spent in Canaan, looking at the land, the people should spend a year in the wilderness so that they should live in the desert forty years, instead of going at once into the promised land. When Moses told all God's words to the people, they felt worse than before. They changed their minds as suddenly as they had made up their minds. No, they all said, we will not go back to the wilderness. We will go straight into the land, and see if we are able to take it, as Joshua and Caleb have said. You must not go into the land, said Moses, for you are not fit to go, and God will not go with you. You must turn back into the desert, as the Lord has commanded. But the people would not obey. They rushed up the mountain, and tried to march at once into the land. But they were without leaders and without order, a mob of men untrained and in confusion. And the people in that part of the land, the Canaanites and Amorites, came down upon them and killed many of them, and drove them away. Then, discouraged and beaten, they obeyed the Lord and Moses, and went once more into the desert. And in the desert of Paran, on the south of the land of Canaan, the children of Israel stayed nearly forty years, and all because they would not trust in the Lord. It was not strange that the Israelites should act like children, eager to go back one day, and then eager to go forward the next day. Through four hundred years they had been weakened by living in the hot land of Egypt, and their hard lot as slaves had made them unfit to care for themselves. They were still in heart slavish and weak. Moses saw that they needed the free life of the wilderness, and that their children, growing up as free men and trained for war, would be better fitted to win the land of promise than they had shown themselves to be. So they went back into the wilderness to wait and to be trained for the work of winning their land in war. End of The Cluster of Grapes from the Land of Canaan